Let's call upon our king. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, so Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Eshir Kitshiyanu, Mavisa Tovetivanu, Lishmoach Chol Shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the Shofar. Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malkuto Leolam Vayed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our El, Yahweh is one. Blessed be his name and his glorious kingdom forever. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am Yahweh that doth sanctify you. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Be'ahavta et Yahweh lehecha, v'kol lavavka, v'v'kol nafshika, v'v'kol meodeka, be'hayu hadebrim ha'ele, asher enoki mitzavka hayom al lavavka, Veshinon Tom Lovaneko, Betty Bartobam, Beshif to Cob of a Teco, who vlek to Coverderic, who shock because who vicumeco, who short Tom Leod El Judeco, Behayu, the Totafold Bain in Echo, who top Tom El Messes Old Beteco, who be shall reco, be a half to Reco Camoca. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. We have, ec- we have an extra two in here. We have an announcement to make. Cole and Beck are expecting a child. And Stephen Hannah's first grandchild and Mark and I's first great-grandchild. So let's be praying for a healthy and safe deli- pregnancy and delivery. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. You ready to, we'll all extend our hands toward the treasure chest. Scarlett's going to lead us in our prayer. Abba, open our eyes and share truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And everybody say together, by His grace, not one will be lost. May Yahweh protect and defend Israel a shining day. May you be like Ruth and Ephraim. May you be deserving of praise. Strengthen them, O oh Yah, and keep them from the strangers. Grant you long life. May we fulfill our Sabbath prayer for you. May I make you good husbands and wives. 
Take till I be 
You shall say before Yahweh your Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levite and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. Amen. Baruch Adonai, humble rock. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Asher b'kav b'nimi kol ha'amim v'natan l'nu et Torah to Baruch ata Adonai noten ha'Torah Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us His Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, Giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. That was awesome worship. Amen. Well, I know that this teaching is probably going to go a couple of different uh, Shabbats, but that's okay. Um, I wanted to, you know, just to lay this out, is we're pretty soon, you know, which is I think Monday night we have Rosh Kadesh, so we'll be entering into another new month, and in this new month, it, uh, naturally, that's the month that uh, Hanukkah is in, and, you know, I was sharing with Arnold outside, we were talking about uh, various things, but one thing that I just believe this, this is just who I am, um, I believe that fruit, whenever fruit is on a tree, that's when we're supposed to eat it. And fruit is, is in the, you know, if an orange is, whenever it's on a tree, it's, that's the best time to eat one, right? Instead of having 40, 100 preservatives and then eating it eight months later. So really what I'm, I'm saying is, is with that mentality, you know, we have times and seasons, you know, Pesach and all of that. But at the same time, we do have Hanukkah and Purim. And I believe that this is important because in both cases, you have a group of people that want it, that wants to annihilate another group of people. They just want to annihilate Israel as a whole. And I mean, it's like, what is going on right now? But guys, you got to understand 
it is not just there in that little bitty piece of land. It's people all over the world. We are Israel. And there's an ideology that just wants to just wipe out another ideology off the map. This is nothing new. We know that Satan is behind it. You know, because here they call us the great Satan and we call them the great Satan. And um, yeah, and we're right and they're wrong. Yeah, go ahead. So, but, but here's the thing. The thing about it is, is whenever these seasons come up, so what happened was, is I was um, reading an article uh, by Tim Hegg, and I just wanted to just read a quote, and this got me thinking about this. And this was an article I think he wrote probably back in 2010, but it has to do with, uh, with Hanukkah. But it said, Hanukkah is a story to remind us not to give up when events and circumstances in our lives seem unbearable. I'm going to read that again. Hanukkah is a story to remind us. Do you know all the feasts and festivals? How many times does he say, remember? But it reminds us not to give up when events and circumstances in our lives seem unbearable. We all... In our life, if you live past two years old, till you get to the terrible twos, you know, we, we all will have events and circumstances in our lives that do seem unbearable. Some a lot more than others. But then when you start looking at people around you, for an example, like what just happened in October the 7th, whenever they went and Hamas got loose and they started killing all of these people, burning all of these people, chopping heads off of all these people. I don't have anybody that I know that's in my family that has gone through that. But a lot of times we cry and we moan because of circumstances and events in, in, in our lives. But some of us, these circumstances and events are very real, and I don't want to diminish that, but at the same time, there's others that's even in this assembly that has had greater loss than I have. So, with that said, though, we need to be on guard that whatever the circumstance or event that happens, that we don't give up. So, before I got into really the... This is probably going to come next week. So, I know Tiffany's not here, but if you're watching, don't erase the board. And uh, because she wasn't feeling well today. So anyway, I just wanted to get here, and I want to talk about fear, focusing on our own weaknesses, distractions of life, and bad information. Bad information is a biggie. But I just, before I get into Revelation, this fear of rejection, failure, and the cost is too high. These are things that, that whenever... Um, Tammy read me this little thing off of whatever, it was on her phone, I don't know where she got it from, but it said this, is that when I was in the world and I became a Christian, I lost all my worldly friends. And then as a Christian, when I started studying the Bible, seriously, I lost all my Christian friends. Can some of us identify with losing some of our Christian friends? Yeah, so when we started doing Sabbath and Shabbat and we started doing the feast and festivals and all of that, we started losing a lot of our Christian friends. So sometimes people won't cross over because of fear of certain areas. So we're going to get to that probably next week. But before we get to that, the Father impressed me, just like He did the last time, to really start off with... Revelation of the seven congregations and just read a few scriptures. I'm not going to go through all of these chapters, so don't panic. But we are going to cover something that's said in each one to remind us that perseverance, guys, this is, this is key to us. The scriptures talks about perseverance in a lot of different scriptures and a lot of different... Peter talks about it. Paul talks about it. The prophets talk about it. But this is it. We got. I want us to keep this 
in our mind as we go through these teachings these next two weeks. Perseverance is a cooperative. Do y'all know what that means? Cooperative work between Yeshua and us. I know a lot of times people will say, well, Yeshua did it all. He took care of our sin problems, but yet he's our elder brother. He is our king. He's our high priest, but yet we are priest. And there was jobs for the priest to do in a priesthood and in a kingdom. And so perseverance is, so he is the one who is to show us how he did it. And we are to follow suit by his example and to not give up. There's times that he went under, no doubt, as we talked about in Passover, great, beyond great, beyond great persecution. And here, I mean, can you imagine in one moment, I mean, you're knowing what you're supposed to be in your calling in your life, but yet the people have this idea that it is totally different. And then you show up on a colt on the tenth day when they were to take a lamb and they too were to start to examine it for four, for four days until Passover, realizing you're riding in here and they're celebrating, they're saying one thing, but knowing that that's really not what's in their heart. They had a great idea because there again, you got to understand what was their motivation of celebration. The motivation of celebration was to get rid of the Romans, to get rid of all the oppression, to let kingdom come and let all of this. Not once in their mind was it, He's here to take away the sins of the world. Because if that would have been the case, you would have seen great mourning on that day. Because they would have realized when Yeshua was riding in on that coat, it should be me riding on that coat because He is riding on that coat because I am put in there because of my sin. We all understand that. So perspective is everything. So we understand that some people in life have been martyrs. I think, if I'm not mistaken, probably all of the apostles probably were martyred, you know, some form or fashion in some way. And they counted it a great honor to die for Him. You know, and this is why uh, we have this when we're going to get to it next week. Is the cost really too high? I do know, I have a testimony that there's been people that will, st- there's a lot of people that can start the race. But, but do we give out before the finish line? And I've seen it. History has shown it. And so what we want to do is, is we want to pace ourselves. And if we will pace ourselves, and if we will focus on Him, He will give us the strength. He will give us the win, the spiritual win. He will give us the Ruach. He will give us what we need to overcome what we need to overcome when events and circumstances come in our life to where it looks like the cost is just too high. But then we have to turn around and look, well, what cost did it cost our Heavenly Father? So I just want to say this before we get into Revelation. Do not think that you're not important to Him. Do not think for one moment because He gave His Son for us. He paid the ultimate price for us. Regardless of who you are, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. I've often said this. Moses... David and Paul, they all had one thing in common. They were all murderers, but yet he forgave them. So don't think that you come to a place in your life that you cannot find redemption. We can because you can't earn it. There's nothing you can do. But once he gives it to you and you accept it, then you just pull up your bootstraps and you start walking in it. And don't, and don't allow focusing on our own weaknesses to cause us not to walk in the redemption that He gives us. Amen? Because you know what? You couldn't do it anyway. But yet, He gives us the power to do it. And He tells us. So with that, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. 
the first congregation that, that he talks to is Ephesus. Verse 7, he says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregations. I want to stop there just a minute. Let him hear what... Do you know that Yahweh's talking to you? Yahweh's talking to me. Because that's what he said. Let him, let him hear. If you have an ear, you have to put yourself in position to hear, number one. Once you put yourself in a position, and that's accepting Yeshua as your Savior, when you put yourself, He is now talking to you. It says, let Him hear what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit's talking today, guys. The Spirit has been talking since the beginning of creation. The Spirit is still talking. We need to hear and listen. Regardless of what we think, regardless of what's going on, we need to know that He is speaking. We need to be in tune with what He's saying. But then He says something. This is important. To the one who conquers, or the one who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of Elohim. Now I just wanted to throw this out there. In all seven congregations, and this is the way it is, Every one of these congregations, we fit into each one. We fit into all of them, spiritually and physically. So what he is telling, there's things that he's saying that is good that they were doing, and there was some corrections of things that they were doing that was not good. He told them to stop. Not only to stop, but also to stop and repent. But the first one here, he says, I thought this was really unique, that the first congregation gets a blessing for those who overcome. And what is it? To eat of the tree of life. The very thing we should have done to start with. So he started in a garden, and he's ending in a garden, and he's going to bring us at redemption time, he's going to tell us for those who fight this fight, if we will hold on, if we will not allow events and circumstances to derail our faith and to derail our walk, the first thing we're going to get to do is we're going to eat of the tree of life because we're fed up and sick from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it's going to be in a garden. And that's the first promise and the first blessing He gives us for those who overcome. We need to be overcomers. All right, chapter 2, all right, verse 11. We're going to go to Pergamum. Like I said, I'm not, we've already gone a few months, well, a couple of years ago. We've gone through all, you can go back and read all the other stuff, and you need to, you really need to a lot. Be reminded of what goes on on each of these congregations. But here again, Pergamum, verse 11, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the congregation. It's amazing he keeps giving you this little uh, nugget here, this little warning or this, this advice or whatever you want to call it, he's telling them that the Spirit is talking. Yeah, verse 11. Is verse 11 Smyrna? Well, hello. How did I get Pergamum on there? Ain't that something? Yep. You know what? I, I, I bypassed one of them. But it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. So what do we do? We inherit, we inherit eternal life. Now let me say something about the second death. That's judgment. Final judgment. Satan, death, in the grave is going to be engulfed by the lake of fire. But He's telling us that the lake of fire has no hold on you. We won't be touched by that. Even though there may be a lake of fire that we may go through in this life, in in type, we can be like the Hebrew children. We can go in it if we have to walk in it. But Yeshua says, you know what? If you go in there, I'm going in there with you. And you will not be burned. If you will be faithful, you will come out with no stench. You will come out with nothing in your life to where you're touched. But you have to believe that. These guys, these, these Hebrew and Daniel, these Hebrew boys, they had their mind made up. When did they have their mind made up? 
They had their mind made up when they were in Israel before they went into Babylon. Their mind was made up there. It's just that because of sin and because of not doing Shemitah, there's a punishment that came, and Yahweh said, you're going here. And so guess what? They were faithful where they were at, but because of the faithful, the lack of faithfulness of their forefathers, they had to go into captivity with everybody else. But do you know, and we've talked this here, it's like Daniel. The father makes a way for us to honor his Torah no matter where he drives us. He is not going to drive you away somewhere and say, well, for this season, you don't have to keep Torah. He doesn't do that. So what does he do? But yet, he has to get the king's attention. He has to get the main, because that king, if you remember, the kings in these lands were gods over these areas. They made statutes and there was all this stuff. So Yahweh Elohim, who is the Elohim, has to get their attention. But you got to get their attention in a very supernatural way. You just can't just get it by saying, that, man, you look, you, you're a pretty handsome guy. I think you're pretty, you're going to make it. No, there has to be something to where Yahweh shows off on their behalf to get his attention. And that's what he has done. He done it with Pharaoh. He's done it over and over and over with all of these kings. And so these boys, they walk in there and their mind, and this is what I'm saying, before events and circumstances happens in your life, this of negative influence, our mind has to be made up before that event or that circumstance shows up. If you don't, you will not. You'll cry uncle. So I'm just bringing this stuff out here because we serve a great Elohim. Now, here's the thing with this. We have to be in tune because if you look at what it says he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The Holy Spirit is talking, and whenever Daniel and them went into captivity, that's what the Spirit was saying. The Spirit was sort of speaking through a prophet named Jeremiah. But guess what? Nobody wanted to listen to him. They listened to the other thousand prophets that was giving a false word. They were given a false word. So this is why the Spirit... And this is why it says, he who has an ear to hear, we understand that this listening and this hearing comes from a word, Shema. This word, Shema, that we say that, that we have to hear with the intent to obey His word, His instructions. Amen? So there's a mindset that for those who have Yeshua sitting in here, that we have to be in tune with His Spirit. This is why we have to know the Torah. This is why we have to know these things, because guys... There is going to be a day when there's going to be a temple rebuilt. And there is going to be a day when there's going to be abomination of desolation that is going to set on that temple. Where have we seen this before? Maybe like during the Hanukkah season, whenever they went and they put Zeus and they built all of this stuff. So what happened back then will happen again, but on a greater magnitude. It won't just affect... Do you think that Israel, this battle that's going in Israel right now, is it affecting just them? It is affecting the whole world. The whole world is now pumping money into this war. They're pumping money from all the United States of America, our government. Other than printing money, where do they get their money? from everybody, from all the people through taxes. So there's everybody in the world, money just don't grow on trees except in the United States. It's the only one they got a printing press, as far as I know. But all of these people, they do this stuff, but it's very important that we know that just because of a conflict is right here, it does affect, but you got to understand this war is different. When you have a thermometer that's stuck in Israel, when you see a war like this, this is what the Revelation starts talking about. Who in the world, I don't know, I wasn't going here, but it just is, I'm just going to flow, I'm just going to go, okay? Because this is important. Times and seasons and what he's doing, we have to be ready. Who has a 200 million man army right now? China does. I would have sit here when I was, when I was reading that, probably when I was eight years old, 
you know, if I was reading that, I was like, how in the world? You know, 200 million is sort of like a big number. When back then, the only thing we had 200 million in population in the United States, and it's big. But yet to turn around and to fathom that today you have an army that's physically that many people. And do you know one thing that they told, I forget who it was, I just remember reading years ago, um, somebody made this crazy statement and told China, like, we can defeat you, you know, and China's answer was, we have more people than you have bullets. <laughs> he said, and you know, they, we'll, just send a, we'll just send them out, and you know, when they, you shoot them, they'll climb over him and come to the next one. Eventually, you'll run out of bullets. You know, and then they started probably making nuclear weapons. You know, because they realized these people ain't lying. But yet, you see in scriptures, east of the Euphrates, you see all of this stuff and you see all the saber rattling that's happening. But at the same time, we have to be tuned with His Spirit. We can't be, because they are, we have pieces of a puzzle. Guys, I don't have all the puzzle. And that's where we have to be careful. This is why when we get next week, right here, bad information. Bad information can cause us to look in a wrong direction and go down a wrong. That's why we need to hear what the Spirit is saying in our day and our hour. Because Daniel, if he wouldn't have been listening to the prophet Jeremiah... He might have started and got a band of rebels and went and tried to defeat Nebuchadnezzar. How would that have turned out? Dead Daniel. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. But you see what I'm saying? This is what would have happened because if, if Yahweh ordains something, you can't fight against it. You just can't do it. Even though it doesn't look spiritual. Even though it doesn't look godly or even though it didn't look like, you know, the good guys are losing. Because Yahweh is going to have His blessings, but yet He's going to have His judgments. He's going to have both. The thing about us, we need to be in tune to hear if He says cross the Red Sea. I'm waiting for it to open, baby. I'm waiting for it to open. Or however you're going to get me across, I'm good. But my mind has to be made up today, right now. If not, I won't even get close to the sea. I'll try to find a cave. Or I'll probably find something else to see if I can't bypass that. So the thing about it is, is there's a promise that we will not see the second death. I'm going to jump down to 25. Here's another scripture that says to a congregation, only hold fast what you have for how long? Until. So if you want to know how long we're in this fight, until. Until means until. He didn't give us a date. He didn't say until 2030. He didn't say until 2025. He didn't say of 1984 or 1990. He didn't say that. He said until. He didn't give a date and an hour and a time here. He says until the end. It tells us one thing. There's going to be an end. We know that. We know and we're looking for that. We don't know, but we need to know that we need to hold fast now to what you have. What is that that you have? You have the testimony of Yeshua and you have the Torah. This is why this is important to us in this hour and day. I'm just telling you guys. Now, all of you young ones that's been raised in this, I mean, we've been doing this a long time. And like I said, we've had some, like Coleman, I think he's 20 years old now, and I don't know if they got... We've been doing this stuff for a long time. They've not known the other way. They've not known Yeshua without the Torah. Like most of the congregations, they know Yeshua, but no Torah just like our Jewish brothers have Torah and they have no Yeshua. And so there is something that the Father has been doing and there's going to be that 42nd generation. There's going to be that generation 
that's going to know. And you know what? I might not be there. I don't know. I would hope so, but I might not. But at least I do know this. That's, there's a group of people that's being raised that knows both from birth, from in the womb they've known the Torah and the testimony of Yeshua. This is what He's doing, and this is why I'm saying that we need not to give up, that we have to persevere, but we have to be in tune with Yeshua because it is a cooperative work. You can't do this by yourself. And you can't just say, look, people, charismatic people can stir up stuff. And people can get so excited just by somebody charismatic stir. They can talk you into crazy stuff. They can talk you into crazy stuff. They can talk you into going in probably buildings that you don't belong in. They can probably talk to you about certain things that you don't, you know, what I'm saying. So the deal is, is that we need to be grounded and we need to know because the Spirit is talking. Did He not say in each one, say, the Spirit says, but can I tell you this, Satan's talking too. There's an unholy spirit that's talking just as loud and just as fast that he is. We have to have the discernment because if, if Satan comes and he disguises himself as an angel of light, he is going to say light, L-I-G-H-T, things. He's going to say light things. He's going to say things that looks like that, that it's the Holy Spirit when it's the unholy spirit. How do you judge it? Sometimes time is how you judge it. Time reveals it. Sometimes you can't. That's why you need to be careful that the things that we hear, that we just don't run out. Now, if the Father says, get up, and He says, fire, you run. But if He's telling us something, it's usually always a warning. When He came to Jeremiah, since we've been on this, I use Him as an example, Jeremiah just didn't start up the week before and said, hey, y'all need to get your act together. He'd been talking to them for like years. He's been talking to them for years and years and years. Noah, been talking to people for years. Mercy, that's his mercy. And you know what? We've been saying this for years. And he has changed us from when we started talking this and when we started understanding some of these things from a very baby step, we were not in our Hebrew roots. And we were saying some things that even when I went back, I didn't have a clue what it meant. I'm just saying. When it says, return to the ancient past, I can promise you I didn't know what that meant. Back then, for sure. Now today, I understand it because I'm walking in it. We're walking in the ancient past. We have, not only, it's still a returning, but most, there's a big group of people all over this world that has returned to the ancient past. They ain't in a returning. They have, they're walking in the ancient past. This is important. This is, a, this is an indicator. This is, this is a sign. These are some of the things that the Father is doing. But what He's telling us, like He was telling this congregation, He's saying that, we have to hold fast until because there's a lot of events and circumstances that's going to come our way that's not going to look good. And you know what? There's going to be events and circumstances that may look too good that's not God. Okay? So we have to be in tune. We need to hold on. Hold on to what? We need to hold on to the testimony of Yeshua in the Torah. That's what He's telling us, to what you have. Verse 26, it says again, the one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. We're going to get to rule and reign with him. If we will keep his ways, remember what we said, what was that last week? Proverbs, I think, 16, 3. You had talked about um, doing his works. Yeah, commit your committing to his committing your actions to his ways committing your actions see there's another word committing that takes something that we have to do now you can't do it later you have to do it when you know it you have to walk if you if you commit your ways it says you will be established or successful 
And that's the same thing here. If we will commit our ways to Him until the end, He will give us the authority over the nations. And then it says, verse 20, And He will rule with a rod of iron, as when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself have received authority from my Father. Yeshua is returning, and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. And guys, we might as well get... This is the message. The message is, He put us here on this earth. He put us in a garden here to rule and reign over the dominion of what He's given us. Adam screwed it up, but guess what? He's bringing Yeshua back. He's going to make a new heaven, a new earth. He's going to purge it. There's going to be a new Jerusalem, and we're going to get to rule and reign with Him. If you look at these congregations and what we're saying, when you conquer... And then there's a blessing, there's a steps of where we inherit, we get to eat of the tree of life. But see, we have to eat of the tree of life before any of this other stuff develops. Just like when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it set something in motion. They were supposed to eat from the tree of life, and it would have set all of this in motion. This is something that we should have already been partaking of, but because they ate of the wrong tree we ended up down the wrong rabbit trail, which was an ugly one. Verse 28, it says, I will give him the morning star. And again, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So the Holy Spirit, through all of these generations, when this was penned over 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit is still talking to His people through these congregations. All right, Revelation 3.5. Another congregation. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments. Y'all remember what Revelation 19, 8 says? What are the white garments? The righteous acts of the saints. What just happened above the congregation? Those who keep my works until the end. And now he's telling us, will be clothed in white garments. How do you get clothed? The testimony of Yeshua and walking out the commandments. So in verse 26, he says to that congregation, you keep my works until the end, and now all of a sudden, those who conquer, we're going to have a garment change. And he says, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name before my Father and before angels. And again, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the congregation. So he's telling us here, here is a ceiling. Here is the righteous acts of the saint. Here is clothing and garments. Here is a promise that our name will never be blotted out. This is, a, this, is, this is great stuff. The reason why I'm telling you this is great stuff Because do you know what the opposite of this is? Did y'all see that little move? You know what the opposite of this is? I don't know what that move was. But the opposite of this is for those who give up, for those who give up, their name's blotted out. There's always if. If you do this, this will happen. But if you don't, this happens. It's never been the same. So we know, and here again, is so sad I know people who has given up. And in that group of people that's given up, I'm not the judge and I'm not the one, but all I can do is when you look at His Word, it tells you it ain't good if you give up. Or right, Revelation 3, 11, congregation. Then He says this, I'm coming soon. You can see this progression. Now he's getting to where I'm coming soon. Hold fast to what you have. Same words. So that no one may seize your crown. Now I'm going to get into some scriptures later, but just to give you this idea, let no one seize your crown. What that means is, is there's going to be people coming and preaching and teaching who, who are teaching falsehood because they're they're wanting to scratch the ears of what people want to hear. So don't allow these people to derail you 
from the truth. Don't allow these people to... This is what Paul had been fighting over and over. He goes in, he sets up a community, and he sets them up on the right pace, and the moment he leaves, what happens? The Judaizers come in, those who come in who are Jewish, and who are teaching them that, no, you have to convert to Judaism to be saved first. You can't do it the way Paul said. So they come in upsetting. Then you had one group that came in and that he was talking about in Timothy, and he says, the resurrection's already happened. Here we are all looking for the resurrection, and it happened back in 70 A.D. You, you have these people, and that's what they're doing Paul said it like this, you're upsetting the faith of those. We do not want to upset the faith of those, but we definitely don't want to be upset. So this is what he's telling us, that we have to hold fast that events and circumstances that come in our life might not be physical. They may be somebody who's persuading you to go a different direction following a different gospel. Verse 12, the one who conquers, I will make him a pillar. We talked about this a little bit. Let me tell you about this pillar. All right, now listen here. There's pillars in the earth, but here this says, I will make him a pillar where? In the temple. This location is important. He is, those who overcome, he said, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my Elohim. Now I wrote this down here. A pillar is a support. Spiritually speaking, pillars are those who support heaven and the community on earth with the testimony of Yeshua and the commandments. I will make him a pillar. Y'all know what pillars are. When you, when it is supports. Guys, the only way that me and you will ever be here the only way that me and you will be a pillar here that he's talking about, we have to be one here. We have to be one here. We have to be a stable force in this earth walking out his ways for others to see and to do. We need to be a servant and we need to be a steward and we need to be a pillar in the communities that he has placed us in to do what he's asked us to do. Not Mark McClendon's ministry, not my own way, and not none of this stuff that I may think, pick up basketball, none of that stuff, is, is to teach Torah, is, is to do the things that he tells us to do, to be probably, hopefully, the great-grandfather I need to be, but be the grandfather, the father, to be the brother, to be the friend, to be the pastor, to be the people that he is at, for in my role, to, what I need to be to serve the community. To be a, to be a uh, steward. How do we manage the kingdom? Stewardship and servanthood, if you can't do that, you will not be a pillar. I'm just saying it. Because a pillar is there for support. You have to be a rock. Can't be shifting sand. You hear all of these things, but he uses this as a pillar. And here's, let me just tell you this. Maybe in your life before you got saved... Or maybe in your life when you got saved, maybe you was more of a noodle than a pillar. But guess what? He's doing something new today. He is bringing Yeshua and the testimony, I mean, of the Torah all together. He's going to straighten us noodles out. And He can make a noodle into a pillar. So don't sit here and focus on your own weakness saying, I can't do this. You need to get rid of this mindset and just know who you are in Yeshua. Because you know what? It's, he did it. All we need to do is start lining up. But you know what? You have to do what He asked you to do in step one. And then you need to do what He says in step two. And you need to start... Well, if, you can't sit, if you can't sit here and say, well... I can't give up the day of worship and go to Saturday because of ball games. Or I can't go to Saturday worship because of what people may say. Or I can't die or whatever. Guess what? You will, you will not be a kingdom. I mean, you won't be a... You might not make it in the kingdom, but you're definitely not going to be a pillar. And this is why this is important. So you see how he's building. The one who conquers... 
I will make him a pillar in the temple of my Elohim. Never shall he go out of it. How we read in Psalms all the time about being in his temple and, and never leaving it. And he says, and I will write on him the name of my Elohim. Guys, Satan is marking his people. He's marking his people. This 666, that's, that's just that's the sorriness of man. Okay, that's what that is. Satan is marking his people, but do you know Yeshua is marking his people? It's not, there's a, there's a marking going on, but let me just tell you about this marking. Satan may have marked a few people, but Yeshua still has the last word. And if that person repents, he can wipe that out and he can put his name there. Amen. So don't give up on your family members. Don't give up on your loved ones. That's Yeshua's job. But Satan is in the marking business, but Yeshua's in the marking business. Let's don't forget that. And who is more powerful than Satan is? Yeshua's more powerful. All it takes is a moment. All it takes is a small moment for an individual's heart to be pricked by the Holy Spirit at the right season and time. And at that right season in time, that person can then turn around and say, what in the world am I doing here? In my Father's house, there's food. And these pig slop, I'm sitting in here running the pigs out to get something to eat. It ain't over till it's over, guys. This is the Elohim we serve, that we know that we keep praying How many times did he say, hold fast, conquering, hold on? Guys, you know what? Our loved ones that don't know and they're not where they're supposed to be, don't let go. You don't let go. You don't let go. That goes a long way that he doesn't let go. That To know that one day in one moment, all it takes is that moment, the twinkling in an individual's life for his spirit to pierce them to where you don't know how miserable these people are. I mean, they can have this persona, but when they're out there in a a moment, it has happened. We have testimonies. We see it all the time. To where in that moment, there's, there's just the Spirit. Did He not say that the Spirit is speaking? Even our loved ones, the Spirit can speak at that right moment, at that right time, that He can prick that heart and they can say, what in the world am I doing here? This is stupid. Father, would you forgive me for being rebellious against you, for being rebellious, period, and would you, would you save me? That's the way it happens. And just that quick. And you know what? He transforms you this that quick. He doesn't wait till you get to some water. He transforms your heart. Then what happens? Then there's the journey. That's right. Confession. And being baptized, there's a journey that happens in our life that, that, that we, we start. So I love this. But let me tell you this. If you're a noodle around your lost loved ones, they ain't never coming in. They ain't never coming in. Do you know that the Father may be waiting on us to be a pillar before He can bring the noodles in? Just saying, we got to be a pillar for Him to be able to transform the lives of those because they have to see it. They have to know the wishy-washiness. So for us, He's telling us that we need to be a pillar in His temple. We need to be a support. Fathers, we need to get our acts together. We need to be the men that we're supposed to be in our household. Mothers can be the pillars to teach the younger ones that's coming up. Amen. So he says that that we will be there. He said he's going to write his name, the name of Elohim. He's going to write the very city of my Elohim, New Jerusalem, which comes down from my Elohim out of heaven and... We're going to get his name also. We must have some big foreheads. Because <laughs> there's some big, there's some big, a lot of names. 
written up there. But you know what? This, I, I, I go back here and I say, where have I seen this before? When he was on the cross, he had names in, in four languages. Is that what it for? Was it three languages? Three languages? Yeah. Mess me up. You said four. I wasn't going to argue. We'll talk to you later. But yeah. But so you see that there, that there is a name. So we see that that very name is also going to be written on us. Then he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And the last one is this. In Laodicea, it says, the one who conquers... I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. Listen what he says. Now, you, you see this right here? I want us to focus on this last thing. Perseverance is a cooperative work between Yeshua and us. Now listen at this verse. Verse 22. I mean, uh, 21, chapter 3. This is Laodicea. And he says this again, the one who overcomes or conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. What does he say next? As I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. So he tells us, we who conquer, because he conquered. And I wrote this down here. Yahweh's grace coupled. Do y'all know what a couple is? A coupling? Between a pump and a motor, there is a coupling. It's coupled. That way, when the motor turns, that's what drives the pump. Yeshua is the motor. We're the pump. Okay? The pump without a motor can't do anything. The, motor, the, the pump without anything driving it. But yet... So you have a motor and you have a pump. Yeshua is the motor, we're the pump, if you want to look at it like that. That's for all of us. Yeah, mechanically not a people, y'all. I'm not going to do bobby pins and hair clips. I don't know about all that. I don't know how to couple that together. But I wrote down it. Yahweh's grace, coupled with our faith, helps us to walk out His will regardless of the circumstance and events that come our way. Yahweh's grace, coupled with our faith, helps us to walk out His will regardless of the circumstances or events that come our way. And this is what He has spoke to me into that for us before we get into this section here. Because this right here has been a killer to a lot of believers. And so what I wanted to do was is to let us know before I got into here that guys, He is speaking to us. He is fighting for us. He did not, did not, did not, if that's proper English. I'll, I guess it all, whatever I say next, see if the English works. But He did not let His Son die in vain. And He's in a fight for me and you. But all He's asking us is, can't we just put out a little energy and fight back? Can't we hold on? How I many? He's telling us to hold on. He's, he has done the work. He's doing the work. He's asking us just to hold on to the things. He's teaching us Torah. He's teaching us what we need to do, what we need not to do. And we need to be a pillar and not a noodle. We need to be strong. Because those, we need to be the support that we need to be for our neighbor. We need to be the support for our family member, regardless. I can't go there. I was going to say this, but, but i got to keep it kosher. Well, I'm just saying, we need to be a pillar, regardless of what they may Say or do or attack the pillar. You know what? I ain't worried about it. I have a job to help hold up the house of Elohim. He's placed me here 
and I'm going to be the best pillar that I can be. I, the house, that, this section of the house is not going to fall because of me. By His grace. That's what I said, by His grace coupled with our faith. Watch out, girl. I know, but I'm just saying this is what we need to be. So today, if you feel like you've been a noodle, let's get a backbone. Let's know that the Father is looking for pillars. He's looking for pillars in this community. He's looking for pillars all over the world. Guys, He is doing something. He's changing with this Hebrew roots and all of this. I don't know what you want to call it. But He is the ancient past. Let's call it that because that's what His word. The ain't, when He is... Do you know how privileged you are? Can I just say it like that? Do you know how privileged you are? Do you know how privileged Peter and them were when he called them? Because he told him, he says, I only, I only chose you because the Father chose you. That's what Yeshua said. You know how privileged they were? And do you know you're no different than Peter and Paul and all of them? You're the same. You're the same. Because when I read this about Pillar, I didn't read Paul and Peter and all their name in there. I read you. That's what he said. I will make him a pillar, male or female. For those who do what he says, if we can understand what he's speaking to all of these seven congregations, if we can do what he says to do, and if we're doing what he says not to do, repent and quit. And bury that. If you can do that, we can be a pillar. That's what He's wanting us to be. There's a lot of pillars in His kingdom. That's a big place. And we need to, be in, we need to do our portion. But to be able to be a pillar there, you have to be one here. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank You for this portion. And I just, Father, I just ask that You would just take this teaching today and that You would drive it home in our hearts and in our minds. That, Father, that it would set a fire in us. The Father, if we're a noodle, to be a pillar. And then if we are a pillar, that we will hold on and that we will be the support that we need to be in this earth. Father, for our loved ones and for those who are maybe backslidden, maybe wayward or whatever, it doesn't matter. A prodigal. But, Father, we see all the way through Your Scripture how You love the prodigals how you love those, and you're calling them home. But yet, we got to do our part. Because whenever they come home, we have to be like we need to be to help them heal because of where they come from. And not enable. But Father, but to be what we need to be in love, to be able to bring people back like they need to be nurtured, and then after their healing, then they can start growing in Torah. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you. Bless your people today in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right. All together. Sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles and gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers in the dispersed of your people, Israel. And prayer for the United States of America all together. Abba, Father, giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth, and may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. In Psalm 122, prayer for the peace of Jerusalem all together.
I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of Yahweh, an ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for there thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David." Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our Elohim, I will seek your good. Amen. The ironic benediction. Yer er anai panavaleko vikuneko Isa er anai panavaleko Veyasem lika shalom May Yahweh bless you and keep you. Amen. May Yahweh cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May Yahweh lift His countenance upon you and give you shalom, peace. Amen. And it's time again for the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri Hagafen, Amin. Blessed are you, O Yahweh or Elohim, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaMotzi Lechem Min Haaretz, Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh or Elohim, King of the universe, who prays for bread from the earth, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat, thank the Lord, it is Shabbat. Bye.